Welcome everybody to One Shot Onslaught. We were fortunate enough to be invited to be a part of this amazing podcast of the Frost Maiden event with a bunch of other really cool shows and we are so excited for you all to take a dip into Icewind Dale with these shows and also the new Wizards of the Coast book, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. If you're new to our show, then welcome. We are an actual play 5th edition podcast that plays through One Shot Adventures from DMsGuild.com which means you can jump into any of our episodes that has part one in the title. Uh, because if you drop into a part two or a part three even, you will probably be pretty lost in what's going on in that uh, back half of that adventure. We play a one-shot from dmsguild.com and we break it into half, generally. Sometimes it makes it into three parts. And then we release every other Tuesday. So in one month, we will release one one-shot of content. We carry the same characters from adventure to adventure as the members of an adventuring guild. They go and pick up quests from their very favorite person in the whole wide world, Benny Dunn. In that guild, we have got Lord Sean Snow, the hero's hero, whom is a 130-year-old human wizard. Iron Claw, the dwarven druid, and his best friend, Claudia, the scorpion. Ted, the heavy metal tiefling bard. And Death, the tiptoeing tiefling rogue. In this episode, we were joined by Barry, who plays Altrex on our other show, Halfway to Heroes, which is my first ever homebrew campaign. So if you enjoy this show and would like to listen to us play a high-stakes, narrative-driven campaign with a great cast and aliens, then you should go and give Halfway to Heroes a listen. Tonight, we are playing Mind Your Head by Steve Pinkotai. Set in Tourmaline, one of the ten towns in Icewind Dale, Tourmaline is thought by many to be the gem of Icewind Dale both due to its natural beauty and its famed gem mine, which frequently closes and reopens due to monsters coming from the Underdark that are venturing forth into the snow. With that, I think you're all, all ready to get right into this amazing one-shot. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will talk to you at the end of the episode before the outtakes. Welcome, everybody, to One Shot Onslaught. Hey, guys, where are we going to start tonight off at? Fandolin. Longboy Tower. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, we haven't been to Longboy Tower in a while. Wherever it is, that's where we're going to find Barry, apparently. No, no, <laughs> and uh, it's not. No. What do you mean? Where are we starting? <clears throat> the Faerun Forest. We're probably in like a farm or something somewhere. It's been weird. so long, I can't <laughs> remember anything. In the lobby of the Adventurers Guild. <laughs> oh, duh. And it's just you four and Benny behind the counter. Benny is currently filling out a fantasy Sudoku puzzle. <laughs> and uh, he looks up and says, oh, oh, guys, I got a I got a pretty high paying one for you if you're all ready for it. Sounds good, Benny. All right, Benny, give us a good one. So uh, you're going to have to team up on this one. I hope that's OK. And it's going to be really cold, so. I forget which one of you don't like the cold, but I know at least one of you definitely doesn't. It's me. Mm. <laughs> uh, you all are going to have to head over to the town of Tourmaline over in the Icewind Dale. Uh, Tourmaline is part of the Ten Towns. It's going to be very cold there, but there's been a murder. Ooh. There's been a murder. <laughs> I always wanted to say that line. Don't worry, you don't have to figure out who did it, because everyone knows who did it. Everyone saw the murder happen. However, Agnes Humbucker claims that something was wrong with her husband, that it wasn't her husband. It was some, like, zombie or something. So she got arrested. She's trying to pay for somebody to figure out what was wrong with her husband. Because if it wasn't really her husband, she'll be free to go if it was, like, a zombie or something. And that is where Delvin comes in. Delvin's actually the one contracting you all. You go meet up with him. He's going to take a cut. It's Devlin. What? It's Devlin. Devlin. I sometimes move L's around 
when I'm saying names. Devlin, <laughs> um, he's uh, from Tourmaline, so uh, you all can meet up with him. We actually just installed a brand new teleportation circle, so it's going to be a real hoot for you all to try it out and see uh, if it gets you there in one piece. You all ready? Oh, yeah. Death just bolts straight towards the teleportation device. You're not supposed to come behind the counter, Death, until I invite you. I told you all this so many times. Hey, Betty. Yeah. You want to come over to my mansion later? (laughs) You know what, Lord Sean Snow? I heard you just hit level 14 recently. Congratulations. Thank you. You went with the mansion, huh? That's right. That's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah, I'll stop by. Um, I mean, I don't know how long this is going to take, but... Sounds we'll good. We'll see. I have a room there, too. Everyone has rooms. That's where we keep our uh, <clears throat> mammoth turkey now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was getting a little big for Long Boy Tower. <laughs> um, so he leads you all, except for Death, who's already like investigating this teleportation circle, back to the back room. There are like different runes that you can place around this big teleportation circle where created throughout different hubs of Faerun there are other matching teleportation circles that now the guild has just kind of like tapped into this teleportation circle ring so um, one of them happens to be in Tourmaline yeah if you all are ready just stand stand on in there do we have to be in it one at a time or can we all get in at nope. the same time up to eight up to eight. my first roll my first roll natural 20 Oh, you wasted oh, it, man. Oh, where'd, Ted, where'd Ted go? He didn't even use the circle. He just teleported there <laughs> on his own. You other three, though, are probably going to need to use the circle. Yeah, I'll use that. I'm going to walk up to it. Uh, getting into the circle, uh, Benny goes behind like a different partition, like where uh, you, when you get an x-ray and the x-ray titian uh, always like walks away. Uh, so you don't see what Benny does, but then... You feel a tugging just behind your navel. It feels like it's like pulling on you with a string. And then you all feel the temperature drop a good 60 degrees, even though you're still indoors, inside the waiting room of the town hall of Tourmaline. And you see, sitting in a uh, like a waiting chair off to the side, uh, Bear, you want to describe your character? Because I just realized I don't know what your character looks like, <laughs> actually. So you see a... Uh, you know, like medium height, thin build guy, all black hair, a little black goatee, sitting there, and he's got some big, thick furs on because it's cold. And he's got his bow, rest up in the chair, and he's just sitting there looking down, and looks up at you. You must be the ones I was waiting for. I'm Devlin. Nice to meet you. What's your last name, Devlin? Shire Smith. And you are? Hmm, Ted. Death Destroyer of Worlds. Ted, what's your last name? Logan. Ted Logan. And and you two, who are you guys? I'm Iron Claw. I mean, that's that's my whole name. Just one. Nice. I like it. I like it. And you? I'm Lord Sean Snow, the hero's hero, the greatest wizard that ever lived. Wow. He has his own theme song. Man, it is an honor. Sing it, Ted. <laughs> I <laughs> forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a very good theme song. <laughs> well, very, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you all. You too. Um, so, I'm imagining that Benny, he's uh, the contact I talked to at the guild, he filled you in on what was going on here? A little bit. There is, there's been a murder. Uh, I happen to be acquainted with the wife. Her name's Agnes. Uh, been friends for a while. Why was her husband murdered and you're around? Hmm? So, I mean, hmm? everybody was around. A lot of people saw it. I just happened to be close by. Uh, you know, I heard the screams of what was going down. And when I ran over there, I saw Agnes being dragged away. And it just so happened that, I, I mean, a lot of people were around. They were witness to it. But the thing that's weird is, you know, they've always been good together. Agnes and, and what's his name? Chad? Chud. Chud. Yeah, Agnes and Chud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've always been good together. Never, ever, never, ever had any issues. I mean, they were super close, always, always together. And for her to kill him is just, 
completely unlike her. But as they were dragging her away, she yelled over to me. I heard the screams and asked me if I could investigate and help find out what was going on because that was not her husband is what she told me. Wait, so his wife killed him. Yes. And but claims it, wasn't, it him. wasn't him. I saw the body. I mean, it looked like Chud. But I don't know what she's talking about. But she seems serious. I'd never know well, her to lie. You know what they say. If it looks like a Chud, sounds like a Chud. It's a Chud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it did. It looked like Chud. You know, they, they carried the body away. You saw him get murdered? I mean, he had a big old knife sticking out of his chest when they carried him away. So you didn't Limp see arms. the murderer. In I action. heard it. A couple other people saw it, but I didn't witness it. I'm was curious. there any blood? Oh, there was a lot of blood. Mm. A lot of blood. Again, knife out of the chest. Limp arm off the side of the, the table they were carrying him away on. So, I mean, it, he looked dead. I'm curious if he was possessed or something like that. I, I, I couldn't ask her for any information before they hauled her away. But she offered to pay me handsomely to find out what's going on. I think we should first find the body. That was my thought, too. I wanted to go get an up-close look at it to see if there was anything different from at least the chud that I remember and know. So, um, I mentioned this teleportation circle is in the town hall. Um, The town hall is three levels. Uh, Top level is the town master's office. Basement is the um, jail for the whole town. There's not a lot of crime here, uh, so it's a pretty small jail. Floor that you all are on is like a waiting area, kind of like a meeting area. And uh, there's a little gnome behind a desk. Um, he's got a nameplate that says Brandon. He's just been like watching you all, just like listening. Yeah, I th- I'm, yeah, we'll go downstairs and we'll find out where they took the body to. You would know that there's only one doctor in town, Devlin. Uh, that is Dr. Sweet. And Dr. Sweet has like his own doctor's office he's more of a general practitioner but Devlin could point out that the body is going to be at dr sweet's office um the crime scene Devlin could take you guys to the crime scene there's let's go to the crime scene crime scene so i mean i'll leave it to a vote for you we got to check out all options here but i could take you to the crime scene i could take you to dr sweet's office that's the that's the doctor around here he takes care of any deaths and all kinds of stuff like that so the body will be well there. Hey, De- Devlin, what's a uh, what's a uh, closer? Um, so the crime scene's going to be a little bit closer. It happened right outside their house. So we're we're at the town hall. It's uh, they live a little bit towards the southeast of town. I'd vote that. Let's uh, let's, let's go take the, the shorter route first. Yeah, let's go to the crime scene. I'll, I'll lead you that way. Uh, so heading to the t- uh, crime scene. This did happen about twelve hours ago. Now it happened early morning. Eight in the morning, right? And it's now like eight in the evening. Uh, so most of the crime scene has now been uh, kind of, you know, obviously the body's not there anymore. So when you all get there, it's uh, right next to the town square and the snow has died down a little bit. It's not really uh, just whipping as hard, which is probably a good thing for the integrity of the uh, the crime scene. But even so on the like stone pathway you can still see it looks like they tried to clean up the blood the best they could but it's still stained around that area i'm gonna do an investigations check i'm gonna get down on all fours i'm gonna get down on all fours and start smelling the ground (laughs) yep okay uh give me an investigation check yes you said investigation yeah can i do a perception i'm gonna get in a magnifying glass out and start inspecting things. You could do a perception, Ted. Who's not doing any kind of investigation or perception right now? I'm just on the ground sniffing it. I got a 23. Iron Claw's just kind of like looking around, just letting them do their thing. Oh, damn, Johnny. I wrote a 30 for a perception. <laughs> <laughs> Your perception's plus 12? Yeah, my performance is plus 15. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Death, uh, you are down on all four, sniffing around, and I mean it's it's really hard to tell because of the fact that they've cleaned it up or tried to clean it up. You you, you all got to imagine for them, 
it was an open and shut case, right? There was like a dozen witnesses that saw Agnes murder the husband. So they just arrested her, and they didn't think that there was really a need to investigate any. But death, yeah, I mean, you're like sniffing around. You definitely see a big pool of blood. Uh, this was definitely the scene of the murder. But there's really nothing else standing out to you with that role. Ted. I better be able to see a Nat's butthole. <laughs> with, <that perception. laughs> with a freaking 30. With a 30. You can see this thin coating of snow on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. In this thin coating, there's obviously been, like, tracks of people that have been trampling across the crime scene. But you see some paw prints, it looks like, almost. Like a, like a small dog. And How small? Like a little Sheltie. They're like right outside of the blood stain and they go down an alleyway and then they take a turn. Hmm. That's it? Yeah. I mean, you could follow them if you want. What'd you see, Ted? Uh, there's uh, some dog, some dog imprints going down the alley. Are there usually um, doggies running around here? Devlin? I mean, people have pets and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's not out of the ordinary, but. Uh... I mean, what are are they like? Is, are they just passing through? Or are they like all trampled around the, the scene, or, or what is it? Well, I think they're all trampled around the scene. The reason that these are even staying in Ted's mind and kind of standing out. So even though like there's like just prints all through the snow, these dog prints are just like kind of like out of nowhere, just like ten feet away from the body. There's no lead up. They just oh bam. okay. That started. makes sense. That makes sense. Now. And then walk down the corner. And you guys have not yet walked down the corner in the alleyway. I think I know what happened, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you get one <laughs> guess. If not, you're out of the game. They it's stabbed like him. And then he turned into a little, I'd say, about the size of a Sheltie. <laughs> and traveled down that alley. <laughs> Johnny's seen Harry Potter before. I mean, it's not a bad guess, but... I mean, I literally watched them carry the body away. But did you see the dog pop out of nowhere? I did not see a dog. Were you looking there, for a I dog? Think. No. I mean, I kind of just watched a good friend of mine get murdered. Well, I didn't watch that, but I watched him get carried away after his wife murdered him. Maybe uh, it was like Men in Black and the dog was living inside of me, just shed his mortal shell, and the dog walked off. Second. Again. So this That's is like, plausible. Could be dog. Peter All of these are sound. What you're <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe we should maybe we should just follow the tracks and you know see where they lead. See if we could find anything else. But this was this was right where it happened. I mean, you saw the scene. I reckon we can track or a, track a Sheltie. If you, I mean, if you want to, we could we could ask around here see if any of these people want to tell us what they saw. Some of these people who were yeah. I wonder if anyone else saw this dog appear out of nowhere. There was, there was a good ten, you know, dozen people standing around. Can you when like whistle for him, tell him to come down here? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Well, hey, right in the clouds to meet us here. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not useless. <laughs> I mean, we could just go knock on a door. Yeah, just something. sky right. Yeah. Free hot dogs, meet here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, free hot dogs meet here. That's five words. I mean, I could do it. Should I do it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> free hot dogs meet here. Everyone's going to be here, though. <laughs> All right, so let's... Use your last 15 words or 20 words and make a big arrow. It's 10 words. I can only use 10. Oh, you only get 10? I think so. Use the last five words and make a big Sky arrow right. point down. Fine. 10 uh, words? That smells even worse than I thought. You can use 10 <laughs> words. I, I'm going to... Go, I'm gonna write in the sky free hot dogs right under this sign, and then I'm gonna use the last couple characters to like formulate an arrow pointing directly down to us. Yeah, like where you have to, like on Twitter, you gotta put it with yeah. like some like pipe symbols and some like V's <laughs> pointing yeah. down. Yeah, and it's just gonna okay. say free hot dogs. All right, it might take a minute uh, to gather a crowd, so if you all wanna follow the path while you wait to build up the crowd. Oh man, they might get angry. 
Um, what I'm going to do, I actually have an idea. It, what I'm going to do in order to generate attention towards it, I'm going to um, cast Thunderstep. I'm going <laughs> to Thunderstep ahead. Um, it, it, you teleport yourself to an unoccupied space. You can see within range. Immediately after you disappear, a thunderous boom sounds. Each creature within 10 feet can take a constitution saving throw. It doesn't matter, but the thunder can be heard up to 300 feet away. So people are going to hear the thunder and immediately look up to the sky and look at our, look at my sky writing. And I've just used a third <laughs> level spell slot and a second level spell slot. And we're not even 20 <laughs> minutes into the game. And we're not even we're fighting. Uh, okay. Hey, is there any uh, plants around? The murder scene? You want to talk to some plants? There's some weeds. There got to be some weeds. Uh, I mean, there's a house plant over there on that dude's doorstep. <laughs> I can't wait yeah. to hear the weed <laughs> voice. <laughs> hey, Flower, did you see anything? While we're waiting, Devlin, would you like yes. to come to my mansion later? <laughs> A mansion? I've never been to one of those. Uh, yeah, sure. That sounds. Uh, I have one hundred servants. They will take care of you. <laughs> Great. Great. That's that's very generous of you. Thank you. You can uh, stay in Death's room for the night. What? Where's Death gonna stay? He can sleep with you. We have bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bunk beds. I have bunk beds in case oh, in case sweet. anyone in case I want to have any guests. Don't let the mimic bite. Jon Snow apparently always invites people to death's room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm lonely. Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Top bunk? No, you get bottom bunk. No, okay. <laughs> at your room. So yeah, that, that's, fair. that's fair. So Ted's walking up to what a house plant? <clears throat> well, there's got to be plants within thirty feet of me with limited sentence and animation. Yeah, I picture you like walking up someone's step and like kneeling down, talking, like having a hard shrubbery heart plant. I'm a, I, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little, a little tap. <laughs> Wake him up. <laughs> is it? Uh, what kind of plant is it? Uh, I think it's a dandelion weed. Okay. All right. You can see like the the head of the plant, the bulb just kind of like tilts up towards you <laughs> after you poke it. Hey, uh, hey, little little dandelion. What uh, David? David. <laughs> <laughs> hey David, what's what, up? Uh, did you uh, did you see anything go on around here in these parts? Are you talking to to, to me to David? Yeah, dude, nobody's ever talked to me. <laughs> no one's ever talked to you, man. No, what's up? like where? Like, what's it like behind this building? Uh, it's it's brown. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was going to be brown, dude. Uh, what's it like behind that building over there? Uh, just behind you. It's a, it's a little bit nicer, but it's like a lighter brown. <laughs> I knew it. I, I, oh, oh. You got any uh, sunlight? Uh, I do. If you answer a few questions for me. Oh, sure. Yeah, I can answer questions all day. So, uh... Just don't ask me what it looks like behind this building, cause I got I ain't got the answer for that. <laughs> did you uh, did you uh, see anything go down today? In uh, in this uh, intersection here, uh, some feller got stabbed. Oh, that was wild, dude. <laughs> did you uh, did you happen to see a little doggy? A doggy? No, I didn't see no doggy. What do you mean? You didn't see a dog. Oh, at the all. weird thing. That was that was, I've seen. Hey, I've seen a doggy. I've seen a Snoop doggy and a regular doggy. I mean, that thing wasn't no doggy. Well, what was it? I don't know, man. Did it have fur? I've never fur? seen nothing like it. No fur on that thing. It the, was like it's a hairless dog. Uh, if it was a dog, that was an ugly dog, dude. <laughs> hmm. Did it look nice? No, me? it looked mushy and gross. <laughs> And it just kind of like popped, and poof, popped, poof. Hmm. Can we hear this going on, or is it just? No, it's just. It's just, it's just okay. Ted. I just picture Ted kneeled down, like talking to a dandelion <laughs> with his arm around it. Yeah. Can we at least see it like moving? 
like looking around. Yeah, it's like wiggling a little bit and <laughs> kind of like using its head to like point in the direction it's talking about. No one else saw. Nobody else saw the weird thing. What do you mean? No one else saw it. Like no one else was paying attention. They were all like, "Oh no, she murdered this thing!" And like, it feels you know, like some like, hairless. Oh, she's a killer. It's some hairless, mushy animal. No one else noticed it but you. <laughs> That's right, because you know what? David pays attention, dude. I see everything. I see the universe. I just can't see behind <laughs> this building. I got a question. Like, when he's talking to the plant, do we hear what Johnny's saying? Or is he, like, Yeah, speaking Johnny's just talking plant? English, like, common. Okay. You should take David and show him the world. Ooh. I want to take David. <laughs> <laughs> If anything, just put him behind put him behind that building in the grass or in the ground over there so we can see that side. No, I'm gonna put him uh in my, mm. my bag of farts. I got a little side oh, pocket. Poor guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, put, I'm gonna put some yeah, I'm gonna put some soil in there. Methane? I'm just gonna put him in there and he's gonna hang out on the side, he's gonna see the world. Wait, why would you put him in a bag? He's gotta yeah, get in a side poke pocket. His head, poke his head oh. out the bag. Yeah, like where you put a water bottle or something. He's in a little side pocket. (laughs) Johnny's bag of farts has a water bottle pocket. (laughs) It's now like a tactical bag instead of like a little burlap sack. (laughs) It's a camel pack. (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm going to put some soil in there and I'm going to put him in there. He's he's going to travel. Ooh, that's Iggles. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, I say we just, well, let me relay what he said. <clears throat> hey guys, uh, the little dandelion. He said it Dave, wasn't. Hey, hey. Oh, I can, I can still hear you. It's David. David. <laughs> His name's David. He said it was not a a doggo, but it was a fat, mushy, hairless thing, like uh, a cat. Uh, he, he didn't say specifically what it was. Uh, he said it just poofed, and it went that way. So I think we should follow his tracks. Wait, wait, wait. Did it poof? Before he, the murder? Or after. after the murder. Um, I think it poofed like after and during when the people were standing around, but he said no one noticed it. It because okay, so uh he could explain that it was like as soon as the guy died and everybody was like rushing around, you know, they saw this lady murder her husband. So it was a pretty chaotic scene. Then it poofed. So the dog possessed the man. Ooh, doggy possession. So it is men in black. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I say we follow the tracks, find this little pudgy, mushy thing. I mean, it, we're we're just gonna have to check it out. We still have to go see the body. Yeah, Ted, you were able to uh, follow the tracks easy enough. Uh, it goes down a corner with your thirty. We can make it so that you can keep following these tracks, even though, like I said, there's like. You know, people walk down this alley, so it's not like pristine sta- uh, tracks. But even so, with that 30, that perfect perception, you can make out the footprints. Now that you've kind of had this conversation with David, you're realizing that they're, you know, a little bit closer set than like a normal dog's footprints would be. And you see these boot prints that walk down the alley facing where the dog was going. And then you see the dog's footprints stop. And the boot footprints stop one foot away from them. And then you see the boot prints turn and walk away. But then after that, the boot prints start to get intermingled with like other uh, boot prints. Will they stop right here, Ted, or what? Yeah, they just stop right here, man. And the the dog prints turn into the, the boot prints, and the boot prints just kind of... Could join in with the other prints. Oh, I think we're dealing with some kind of shapeshifter then. So yeah, I, I wanna I wanna make sure I described it right. There was already footprints coming towards the dog. Oh. Uh-huh. And then dog prints went away, footprints turned around and walked away. So it didn't turn into it like a shapeshifter. Oh, someone snagged the someone snagged the the hairless dog. Or the dog went into that other that person. person. Because yeah, it, it sounds know. like the when the so guy was inhabiting a body. Yeah, so it, I, it's looking for a host, I think. It's so like the dead guy was the host, and then when he was killed, it left, and then it found another host. And my character, that or maybe it is that, just a dog. And they picked right. it up. 
He either possessed someone or he got adopted. <laughs> <laughs> Alleyway adoption. You're coming with me, you little naked filler. <laughs> You're coming to your forever home. <laughs> So, do we want to go back and start questioning the people that think they're getting free hot dogs? Oh, yeah. There's probably a crowd now, <laughs> by now. Yeah, they're probably hungry up there. So, uh, let's go check that out, and then and then we can go check out where the body's at. Also, look for that. dogs on the way. Or small, hairless How many animals. people are here? Uh, now that you're all back in the square, A... All the people here look a little angry because it looks like they're expecting some hot dogs. I can summon my mansion and give them hot dogs. <laughs> oh. That's a so seventh level. You don't spell pop slot. in the mansion like in a spot. You pop in like a door. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it will work out for you. It's not like your mansion will like squish all the houses or right. anything. <laughs> it's literally you pop up a door. Yeah. Are you going to use a seventh level? <laughs> well, I don't want them to be pissed and lie to these people. Let's ask them for information for hot dogs. I used my one of two level three spell slots, so I think I think we can. We can yeah, afford. I'm going to do it while um while he's casting this. I'm going to go look for a poster board, make like a hot dog signs pit, uh, poster. You know what I mean? Just so they know they're right here at this door. The arrow pointing down from the clouds. Well, how long is the clouds going to sit there? Until a swift breeze blows them away. <laughs> is that what it says? We've been walking around a bit. <laughs> All right. I'm going to cast I'm going to cast it. I'm going to I'm going to open up my mansion, Mordekainen's mansion go. door. Just want you to know there's a hot dog stand over there in the market square. We could have just like bought some hot dogs. Well, I'm spinning the already, sign too. There is, there the, the is a hot dog here. stand. Let's just use it. It'll be fun. I'm a sign spinner too right now. Let's do it. I want to check out my bottom bunk. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, cast invisibility. Hey, you, all have, <laughs> you all have rooms in my uh, mansion. Are we bringing the people with us? Everyone's just trying out their new spells. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, me. are we inviting? Are we inviting these? You know, half dozen people into yeah, the mansion. Yeah, that's okay. where we'll question them. We'll have a line All for right. the hot dogs. You interrogate people. <laughs> okay. The hot dogs will be available in death's room. Everybody. Yeah, but I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm in my room, like cooking up some hot dogs. No, you're not cooking. I have a hundred servants. Oh, I wanted it to be from the heart. You you can you can make some hot dogs. All right. Are we on the right track though with these hot dogs? Oh yeah, this is like this is in the adventure written down <laughs> that you have to make hot dogs to get people to answer your questions. So I don't know how. Like I don't know if you guys like hacked into my computer and got this adventure or what. So I'm a little angry, but uh, it seems to be working. Once the guys get their hot dogs, I'm sure the mansion has like a conference room or something. We they probably can, have a movie theater in there too, or something, man. Yeah, really okay, we can get Bowling all the people alley. into the theater or the yeah, probably conference an auditorium room. or like a gym room. <laughs> yeah, like we, oh, we have the the little earpieces with the mic that comes down our cheek, like a motivational speaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? <laughs> <laughs> they have to give us correct, like you know what we think is valuable information in order for them to get a hot dog. All right, you guys use so many high level spells. I'm not going to make any kind of rolls to get people into this mansion. They're just going to go in for these hot dogs. And you know, you guys have a couple of the servants that are like motioning and uh Iron Claws doing his sign spinning to point to the conference room. And um you all get four people. This town's not <laughs> huge. Four people or <laughs> This town's not massive or anything. Four angry people. I thought you said there was like I, I could have sworn you said there was 120 people in the square. I said that 12 people witnessed, witnessed. the murder. Oh, I thought you said 12 dozen. I said, I think I said a dozen. <laughs> I've made so many hot dogs. Well, you got four. Maybe one of them witnessed it. Or maybe yeah, all four good. of them witnessed it. Oh, that's fine. And welcome to, welcome to my mansion. <laughs> How do you like it? Oh, I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice mansion you got here. That's right. Uh, here, uh, yeah, where's my, uh, where's the, the hot dogs? Is it like a buffet or? Also, didn't you, didn't you say a crowd of angry people? <laughs> four is a crowd. Four is a crowd. They say three's a crowd, so four is a crowd. 
Whatever, guys. <laughs> yeah, so um I'm you mentioned hot hot dogs. Yes. Would uh, you like mustard, mayo, relish, foie gras, or some ketchup? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um I'm kind of in a rush. I gotta get it down to the mine. Um, could I get some some ketchup and some mustard on it? Yeah. Do you said I had to do something for this hot dog? You have to give us valuable information. Yeah. It's it's like uh it's like buying a timeshare. You gotta go through the little seminar. Oh, you got I gotta sit through four and a half hours of meetings to get a dang hot dog. You can have one one now, one later. Not four and a half hours. Yeah, we'll give you one for the road if you answer good questions. All right. Give me you, that you, first hot dog. You can have as you look familiar. You I've seen you around town before. It's it's, it's yep. Marcus, right? No, my name is Haywood. You pinch me. Close, close. I know I've seen you around. You live in the square there, right? Right. Yeah, by, I got by, my by windows facing the square. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, what, uh, what, what did you see happen? Were you, were you a witness to what went down? You know, oh, you mean when? Ago? Oh, you mean when Agnes? Yes, yes. When Agnes. Chud. Yeah, I saw yeah. it all. You saw it in real. time. I was getting time. ready for my shift to go down to the mine. I mean, what did, could you hear what they were saying? Were they arguing? What, oh what yeah, was she on? was she was saying stuff like, you know, hey, you ain't my husband, and she stabbed him real good. Uh, just one stab's all it took, and I can tell you, I'm friends with I'm friends with Chud. I was, I guess. Now, still hurts, but uh, see, Agnes, she she thought Chud was cheating on her. He was he wasn't cheating on her. He's a busy man working the mine with me, and uh, yeah, she just got you know she got insecure and just stabbed him real good. Did Chud seem unusual at all? I don't know. Chud seemed just fine, uh, like a dandelion. Have you ever found anything unusual in the mine? Um, no, not really. I mean, it gets, you know, sometimes we get into like these different pathways that lead to the underdark and we'll get like a skeleton or two that come up, but, uh, we usually just like, uh, blow up that mine shaft and continue on working. I'm going to peek my head in the door and say, Hey, make sure you guys incite those people in there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be incited when I came in for a hot dog. I heard that. <laughs> in, you know, I mean, look, we're just vetting, vetting possible, you know, people who are for witnesses to try, trying to get clues. So it's it's all part of the process. I rolled an eleven total. Harry, hey, Harry, Haywood, Haywood, hey, Haywood, you pinch me. Haywood, Haywood, space, you pinch me. I mean, you probably recognize who I am, or at least see me in the mines. I mean, I'm down there all the time. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Daryl? David? Devlin. 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 Fair enough. I mean, you know, we don't. We've, we yeah, you called me before, like Howard so. or something. That right. That was pretty off. Right. So, fair enough. But, uh, I mean, look, you know, we're just trying to make sure everything's good here and that, you know, we're getting the proper information. Did you see anybody else out there around Agnes? Or, you know, around the same time that this went down, or did everybody kind of come out after the commotion? Nope. Like I said, I was getting, I was gearing up to head down to the mine, looked out the window, saw her stab him. And like I said, I know that she's been kind of like weary of him, thinking that she, he's running off cheating and stuff with, uh, with, uh, Clara Mainster. But right, that down. Uh, that's all nonsense. Clara, Clara Mainster. All right. I incited him. But I, I just looked at him and squinted really hard. <laughs> That's how you inside. He got, he got an 18, so. Is he telling the truth? Oh, you got an 18? Yeah. It seems like you're not, like, catching any kind of the telltale signs of lying. You're not seeing, like, any kind of, like, um, uh, like furtive owl, uh, eye movements or furtive owls either. Uh, he doesn't have like a bunch of owls in his pockets or anything. Um, he's what? not like breathing heavy. <laughs> I accidentally said furtive owl movements instead of furtive eye movements. <laughs> <laughs> but he seems like, uh, like every other word that he's saying just seems, I don't know. It seems weird. It seems like he's, I obviously did a bad job of, uh, doing it for the voice, but you're picking up that it seems like every other word, it, 
kind of sounds like he's like reading a script or something. I didn't mm-hmm. like his answer, so I'm gonna like I'm gonna give him a hot dog, but I'm gonna use sleight of hand and just be like, "This is." He thinks he's getting the hot dog that he he deserves, but he's not. Oh, he's getting a bad he's getting a bad <laughs> hot, dog. hot dog out of it. He's getting just a bun. <laughs> he's just getting a he's bun. He's just getting a bun with ketchup in it. <laughs> Do you mean to roll that? Sure, roll it with your plus twenty sleight of hand, and let's see if he can steal this wiener. Well, <laughs> also if he gets a high roll. Oh my god, <laughs> thirty two. So he doesn't even realize there's no hot dog on him as he's eating it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got to get back to the mine now, so uh, I will see you, gentlemen. I'm just looking later. at my boys like. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to the door. He takes a bite. Looks back at you, five, and uh, just continues walking. He leaves. just shrugs. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't seem to That's notice nice. that there was no hot dog on it. Saving the hot dogs for the real players. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i mean you know did, did it feel kind of weird to you lord sean's now something something about the way he yeah he was i was about. vibing with him man did you hear the way he was saying every other word it was strange it was strange it was a little strange it was a little strange there's three who, who else came there's three other people that came in here where are they now how many rooms you got here? They're in a seminar yeah. room. There's, a, seminar there's room. four billion rooms. <laughs> <laughs> four billion DM's, rooms. DM's not here, so as many as I want. There's, <laughs> there's four, billion four billion rooms. rooms. <laughs> I'm going to peek in real quick. Hey, how's it going in there, guys? Where, where, are, you, where are you at? Why aren't you in here? I'm Willis? spinning the sign for the hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot. Do you need me in there? Another person in the room is... Devlin could look at her and know that it is Jessica Mainster. Oh, Claire's wife. Okay, this is her wife. So, uh, yeah, this one right here, I can tell you guys, this is this is Jessica. Uh, that's Jessica Mainster. This is the wife of the person Haywood was saying that that Chud was cheating with here. Let's let's go over. Uh, Dad, you got one of them hot dogs there, man. Let me let yeah. Me, let me see one of those. So real quick. I, what do you want on your hot dog? Can we eat hot dogs? I mean. I, I don't want to. I'm going to take it over here to Jessica and see what she knows about all of this. Give it a classic Chicago dog. All right. Give the old Chicago dog. All right. Dr. Dove hands it to me. I'm going to walk over and say, hey, Jessica, how you doing? <laughs> Here's uh, a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you like Chicago style. <laughs> Oh yes, it's it's one of the ten towns, right? <laughs> Chicago is one of the ten <laughs> towns. Yes. Uh, so look, uh, you know, obviously, you probably know what happened. Word spreads quick here, so uh, we are inviting people here for hot dogs to see if they'd like to share what they may know about what went down between Agnes and Chud earlier today. I mean, I didn't see it. I was just at home. So you were at home. What about uh, what about Clara? Was she around the town square? You know when this happened. She hasn't been home a lot recently. What do you What do you mean? Like uh, around normal hours, or just? gone at weird times she like, and chud have had did have some secret mine project that they were working on together hmm. yeah i'm just gonna turn around and look at the guys and go hmm. <laughs> 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 Makes uh, sense. i know what you're thinking i can tell you right now claire would never be Cheat. That's not Clara. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, from what I know from Agnes and Chud, that doesn't seem like something Chud would ever have done. So, I mean, I believe you, but I also am gonna insight check this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna insight you <laughs> <laughs> secretly. You know, I'm like telling her. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell her I believe her. Detective oh, Devlin. Freaking someone else needs to do this. I got an eight. What is it? Insight. Insight. 
I got an eight, and I got, Ted a, 13. got a thirteen. Ted, you um, kind of like Haywood before. Um, you're not seeing any signs of uh, lying or anything, but the difference is, it doesn't seem like she's. It seems like she's being genuine, and not reading from a script. We'll we'll let you pass. Pretty satisfied with that. Pretty satisfied <laughs> with that. You can have another hot dog if you want, but uh, <laughs> so Tess, the hot dog boy, is Death going to give her a hot dog? I, I'm going to actually give her like a, a legit hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what, what what have we been? Ge- oh, like because you slipped it out of Haywood's bun. Yeah, Hay- Haywood's, Haywood's bun was just a bun with <laughs> with uh, with, with ketchup. <laughs> ketchup and bun. You're so like Tess has got amazing. two hot dogs. <laughs> Yeah, that's a double dog. <laughs> it's a double dog on one bun. Yeah, I'm going to give her a legit hot dog. Okay, are, are we talking to any other people in here? Are we ready to go? I think, I think uh, I don't know. If, I mean, I feel like we're wasting our time, like, talking to these people if we know that there is some kind of, like, weird... Secret mind project. Secret mind project. A weird, like, host-seeking dog... Like they probably not not to be confused with my hot dogs, but um, like <laughs> my hot dogs aren't going and possessing people. Um, Death's no. famous hot dogs. They're authentic ballparks, hundred percent beef, kosher. So good stuff. Yep. Look, uh, I mean, we could move on, but I mean, I I think aside from maybe going to check out the body, like you guys talked about doing, we should also pay a visit over to the mine. I know a couple of the, you know, the the foremans down there that run the place, and and maybe they know something about Chud and his crew, or something he might have been doing at work. Maybe he opened something to the Underdark that. Well, she that said it was a secret or report. Mind right. project. Maybe, maybe they didn't report it. Maybe they found something that, you know, could have caused him to be weird or act weird. All right, I'm gonna have the servants carry everybody out. <laughs> just shoot everybody out carry everybody out and as soon as they leave and as soon as you leave I think the mansion just poofs out of existence well I'm gonna look in the door real quick and say hey death hey bring me a double dog please I'm starving alright I make him up a special dog with like and it's a it's a vegan dog too for Iron Claw so I'll, I'll tell you this much as far as the town layout Dr. Sweets is a little bit further south down closer to where we are now and the mines are back up northeast on the opposite side of the town hall like off that way uh, i bet so, what's I'm, uh whatever's closest so you said the doctor's closer yeah doctor's closer we can go to dr sweet so dr sweet's house uh yeah that's right i said house it's it doubles as his house and his operating room and the morgue for the whole town <laughs> My my buddy's uh, death got tummy and he got too much beef in his belly. It's not a single room house, is it? No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> there are like those back double doors that you push on, kind of like saloon doors, but floor to ceiling. Um, but he's like behind a desk right in front of those double doors, currently uh, filling out a large report, maybe like a death certificate or something along those lines as you all walk in. Why, yes, how can I help you Guys, I can, I can create a distraction, and you guys can go... Dr. Sweet, stuff. Man, we kind of go back a little bit. I've been I've been working around here a long time, so he might just let us go in and peek. You know, I could ask. If not, we can make a... I am right here. I did acknowledge that I have greeted you all, so I heard everything <laughs> y'all just said. I mean... Uh, Dr. S, you know, Dr. Sweet, you know me. It's Devlin. How you doing? Good. How's the arm treating you? Oh, it's much, much better. Thank you for that. Been great. Um, I just wanted to bring these guys around because, uh, look, we're, we're investigating what happened to, uh, Chud Humbucker earlier today. Oh, uh, the stabbing. Yes. yes. The stabbing. The stabbing. I know you're here. You know, I'm, I'm good friends with Agnes, have been for a while. Um, I'm just kind of checking things out, and I don't know if you read in the report or got the whole details about how she kept screaming that it wasn't her husband. And I figured I could bring these guys down here since they're helping me check everything out, and maybe we could see the body for ourselves and just kind of give it a glance over. 
Barry, roll me a, a persuasion with advantage since you have past relations with uh, Dr. Sweet. Plus one. Oh, 17. Okay. 17? Yeah. We're good. He, uh, well, well, now, okay, now, okay, now. I don't really, you know, don't be poking too much on the body. I didn't have to do an autopsy or anything since, you know, it was just the open chest wound in the chest cavity, but y'all can come back and take a gander. Do you, uh, do you happen to have the knife still? Can oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that, too. I'll think about keeping it. Like, uh, Dr. Sweets, uh, I think there's, uh, someone out in the street, uh, not feeling too well. Uh, he looks like he may have puked and maybe pooed his pants. Uh, Drank too much. Since you're the only doctor in town, you might want to go give him a little peek. Can I persuade him to leave? Because I rolled a natural 20 plus 7. Yeah, I'll go give him a bottle of water and two ibuprofens. I'll be right back. You all don't touch too much while you're in here. Hey, Devlin? I'm, yeah, count, yeah. I'm counting on you to keep an eye on these other four that I don't know. Dr. Sweet, I vouch for him. You you know, you know I've got you. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. Right. I appreciate you letting us do this and take a look. Really he heads help. out. <laughs> it might not be for super long for him to be out and not find anybody that's sick out there. So you guys might not have too long. Can I lock the door behind him? Sure. It's got a <laughs> lock on it. All right, I'm gonna lock the door. Oh, okay, God. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm, like a hotel I'm, lock, uh, one of those like chain locks. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. you're gonna get me in trouble. But he's in. Yeah, but he's on the. <laughs> but that's on the out exterior door, and you guys are going into an interior door. So even if he like poked it open, he wouldn't be able to see into oh. where you guys are. Oh well, he's gone for now. I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna peek that piece of paper he was writing on. Okay. Uh, yeah. I won't have you roll for that. Um, it looks like a really standard, as long as you can read, Ted, I think you can. It looks like a really standard like death certificate. The only wound it's talking about is the stabbing in the chest. Um, nothing else is really standing out. I mean, it's really boilerplate stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up and sniff the body for an investigation. I'm with death right now. I'm going to stay in the front room where he would re-enter. Okay. And then distract him if they need to do anything. Let's just say how cool it would be for me to finally smell something finally. with an investigation on this show. <laughs> finally, let's try it. <laughs> Here we go, boys. That one. So, so I, this uh, would be a medicine check, actually. Medicine, medicine check. check. Okay, that's, that's even better. So I want to be the diversion for them to do what they need to do. Okay. 15. 15. Total medicine Total check. Total medicine check. 15. Does it work? Seeing the big chest wound in it. Smells it. like a dead body, boys. 15's not bad, but it smells like a dead body. It smells like, yeah. I'm going to run the body over with a magnifying glass. Oh, oh my dang. God. I got 23. Wow. Lord Sean Snow, you pull out this magnifying glass and you're like going over the entire body. You do see the big chest cavity uh, where the knife was. You also, when you get to the head, you try to lift it up and look at the back of the head. And when you lift up the head, the head feels really light. Like, way lighter than a head should feel. Boys, come here and feel this head. Oh, he sucked his brains out. This head's very light. The dog, the dog was living in the head. I mean, look, they say, you know, during, he didn't do the autopsy, if I heard that correct, right? He did not. He's <laughs> like, so, yep, he stabbed. So, I mean... There should be a brain in there, so that's a little strange. When did morticians get so lazy, you know? Um, hey, now, uh, this seems to have locked on the door here. Could you slide this open yeah, for uh, me? Yeah, give me a minute. I'm just going to shut it and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, we've already determined that the, the head was empty, so it had to have been that black dog in the head. We just need to figure out like where that went or like where who it's possessing or ho using as a host now or they start walking around and shaking people's heads <laughs> <laughs> excuse me sir excuse me let sir. me weigh your head 
<laughs> no, no, sir, no, just he opens the door again to that crack. No, you, you just got to slide that off and then I can open the door and I can come in and show you all the body. All right. Let me let me shut it again. And try to slide it. I just want to shut <laughs> hey, it. hang on a second. Hey, Ted, <laughs> if we let him in here, we could just have him cut this open. Maybe we can see if there's any kind of stuff inside that. Like maybe it's attached to no, a certain I, way. I don't think it should take this long. I think you should just have to. Sl- you just gotta slide it off. Yeah, slide let's it to just the open left. it, Ted. You slide it to the left, and it'll go in the little circle, and then you pull the chain out to the big circle. Just pull you it out. You slide the Ted. little thing through the big circle, and All you right. just pull it out. All right, I'll let him in. I'll slide it to the big circle. <laughs> okay. Um, he comes. Oh, thank you. So it was the first uh, slidey locky thing you've ever seen. Yeah, it's uh, my first one. It's, yeah, <laughs> first one's always the hardest. Uh, now let's go check out this body a little bit. It's, you know, your we don't have there. any locked doors but where I come from. Hey, Doc. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, can you uh do me a favor? Would you stick your head under his, stick your hand under his head and lift up. Tell me what. Tell me what you feel. That feels like an awfully lot head right there. Right. It's the same thing we were thinking. You said you you didn't you didn't do an autopsy, clearly. Oh no, but, look uh, at this thing. Chud got stabbed right in the heart. Right. Oh yeah, but yeah. His, you know, his head's awful light. Oh, <sighs> that's that's gonna take me a whole like ten minutes to cut the head open, then like this goo and stuff. Well, let's oh, do I it. didn't wanna I'll cut it I open. Mean, no, 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 y'all ain't allowed to touch the body. This is my jurisdiction. I'll do it. I'll do it if y'all are really determined. That does feel awfully light. I don't understand. So let me just stand back. You think he has like bird bones or something? Like what kind of doctor are you? You think he has bird bones? <laughs> and um, inside, there is no brain. Well, would you look at that? That don't make no sense. He was walking and living just right before he got stabbed. What would have happened to the brain? Well, you can't walk around with no brain, man. That's what I'm saying. Um, I just, I'm going to do an investigation. See if there's any kind of thing in there, like, did this thing latch? Or any kind of signs that... Um, yeah, Bear, you could roll. Um, again, it will be a medicine check. A 12. No, this is... We are playing with you all as level 14, so the DCs are a lot higher. I'm going to try to sniff it. <laughs> <laughs> so medicine plus two. Ooh. 16 was your first one. Do you see weird markings through the nasal cavity? Like through the nose. But you can't, I mean, you can't make heads or tails like what it is. It looks like like maybe like little like scratch marks, maybe? Like claw marks. Hmm. I see little scrapey scrapes on the nose. Something went up his nose. Like a rat. So maybe, maybe this thing jumps up and it, you know, maybe it goes really small and climbs through the nose. So we we know now that like it's a hundred percent something is jumping from body to body. All right, let's go to the mine. Yeah, yeah I think that I think we should go down there. Um. So it is uh nighttime now. But Devlin could take you right to the mine. Devlin. Yes. As soon as you uh, get up there, it is now, we'll say it's like 1030 at night. Ooh, the witching hour. Ooh. Is that, I thought that was three. To death, it's 1030. Uh, walking into the, the mines, uh, Devlin's been here many times before. And Devlin, you can know that, you know, heading down into it. There's a little office right before the mine shaft that goes down deeper into the mines. And uh, the office has like uh, these round windows all the way around where uh, Gino Malley works as the overseer of the mine. So Gino Malley is working even this late hour. It seems weird that she's working so late. Uh, but she looks out and opens up her window and looks at you and says, Wow, wow, wow. What are you all doing coming in so late? Apparently from Boston. This was supposed to be an Owen Wilson impression. Was that not very clear and good? No. Wow. Owen Wilson's going, wow, 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 wow,
Wow. wow. <laughs> um, so uh, what Devlin could tell you all about Gene O'Malley, maybe on the walk to the mines, is that Gene O'Malley used to work down in the mines and had this mining accident where she lost one of her arms and since then got a like management position where she now just oversees uh, the mine. And Devlin could also point out that she's like even a little weary of the mine now she's not a big fan of going oh, into the mine so. yeah, she actually she she was opening one of those new shafts when uh you know she accidentally crossed into the underdark a little bit got a nice surprise from a, a creature come up snatched her arm right off it was a pretty gruesome experience why didn't you tell us about this before man uh this was on the walk to the mine he said so you knew this going in to meet her what a why, what are you all doing in <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what you were doing with your lips. <laughs> hey Gene, we uh we just wanted to stop by, wanted to ask you a few questions about one of the workers down here. Figured uh you know, you can help me out with this investigation I'm taking care of here. Oh, who are you uh investigating? Um, I need some info on Chud Humbucker. Oh, Chud. Yeah, I know Chud. Uh, yeah, he he died today. Yeah, I have I heard the news. Terrible news. Terrible news. Yeah, and you know Agnes, of course. I mean, met her before at the company Christmas parties. Of course. Stuff like that. Yeah, she killed him. Um, Pretty gruesome. Pretty bad scene. But apparently, from what we have discovered here, me and my compadres back here, Chud and... Carla, right? Carla, that's what it was. Yeah, main main mainstream. Oh yeah, Carla and Chud were the ones working on my secret mining project. Okay, so you're aware of this. Okay, great, great. This is gonna make this a lot easier. Um, we need to know. Well, I mean, what was the secret project? What's what? What were they doing exactly? So you you obviously know Devlin that usually. It's uh, coal and other emeralds and sometimes rubies that are coming up from the gym mine. But what you don't know is that a few weeks ago, a different crystal came up. You know, wow, it was <laughs> magnificent. It was uh, the small nugget that nobody knew what it was. So they were meant to spearhead an operation to find exactly where the source of this other nugget was because we thought it was probably going to be worth a pretty penny but no more ever came up after that and i was a little suspicious about that like why why had they not been able to find any other since i gave them those positions as management of that project but i didn't want to go down to the mine myself and check it out so Ah. It's understandable, um, given what happened. Yeah, so, it, I mean, it's been weeks since we saw... I've got a nugget back here. Uh, I can't, if you all want to see what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Is this the one that they found? The one that was This is the there? first one we found, and then after I had them looking for more, they just never came up with any other. And uh, she goes back and reaches on top of this top uh, tall shelf and pulls down... Uh, this little box that she opens up and shows you all. And it's like this, it's almost crystal. Uh, it's like a gray sparkling crystal that seems to be like giving off a vibration of energy almost. Yeah, see, it seems like it's like worth something really good. So we were going to, you know, we were trying to find a bunch of it, but they just haven't found any. What since would be I a good that. check for that crystal perception? Arcana, probably. Um, Arcana could do it. I'm like elbowing Lord Snow. I'm like, bro, bro, check it <laughs> out. Ar- Arcana check. Lord Snow. Yeah. I want to cast an Arcana check. <laughs> you have the highest, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, Definitely. I have plus I have, zero. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have a, think I have a plus 10. So I got a dirty 20. Ooh. You can tell for sure this nugget has some kind of like inert magical properties it's not just like your run of the mill uh crystal or ore or gem but even with a dirty 20 you've never seen it before you can't determine its properties i don't know what the 
heck of this is? Right. So, uh, look, Gene, this is pretty interesting. I've never seen anything like this down before, and you know, I've been down here a bunch with you guys. So, could you could you point us to, you know, specifically where they were digging for this secret project of yours? We want to kind of check this out a little farther. Ooh, I mean, I haven't I haven't really been down there much myself, but um, as far as I could tell, it's where the majority of the traffic was going so you should be able to just like track where the heaviest foot patterns are and you should be able to find it pretty quickly here's a key to the gate so she does give you a key to a gate because at this late hour uh the mine is officially closed but she knows devlin so she's you know if you're and she's she's already been wary since they haven't been coming back up with any of these gems that they she literally tasked them with finding a month ago and they haven't found a single nugget she's already been weary about them but she just has not dared to go down into the mine herself so i wonder if they were stealing or what they fell i'm continuing down yeah we're just gonna go down the shaft and make our way there i have a hold of ted's tail just <laughs> you know like you know good point what are we doing for light situation? Someone light my horns. Uh, if Ted, if Ted's taking point, we'll have Ted's horns. Yeah, Can you describe your character for me, Devlin? Again, what you got? Uh, like he's like a a medium height, thin build guy. He's human, dark hair. I'm a ranger. Can I cast light on his longbow and arrows? You could. Um, Devlin also. Because he took the Gloom Stalker, I think yeah, it's Gloom called. Gloom Stalker. Um, he has dark vision, sixty feet. Even though yeah, he I've is got a sixty human. feet of dark vision, so he's good. My dude, my little lizard. I'll send my lizard boy in there, Zarbanoff. Light up, light up, Zarbanoff, and yeah. have Zarbanoff be the big right. uh, light deal. Um, so yeah, uh, walking down, um, I'll you hold do on to Zarbanoff's get, tail. <laughs> you do eventually get to a gate, but. Um, uh, she gave you a key so that you were able to uh, pop that open. And Devlin, you have spent so much time in these mines. You are able to easily just kind of navigate through them. You're able to easily track the footprints. And um, you eventually make your way down and find where the mining cart path ends in like a T intersection but there is a tunnel like a newly excavated tunnel just off of the side off the track no mine cart goes down there but there's a small hole where you all could easily like fit and duck down into where all a bunch of footprints lead down into hmm. okay this is this is new right here. I've never seen this before. This must be that tunnel that they were talking about that she sent them to go find things. There's some Zarbanoff down there. Yeah, yeah. Send some. We, can Sean and I see through our familiars? Eyes? Yes. Mm -hmm. And okay. with dark vision, too, I think. Yeah. I'm going to send Claudia down there, too. Yeah, I'll turn my light off. Oh, Claudia, too. I hit the light switch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you send these three familiars down here. It opens up into this cavern where it, eventually the minecart path is no longer going down here. This is just like a tunnel. And it opens up into this pretty big cavern where you can see ahead of you, like, you see, like, walkways like a small path and it opens up and there's like a floor and all of you, all of this, it's still like pitch black in here, right? You can't see much, but with your dark vision, you can see that there's like this, um, platform where there's like a, a stone table on the platform. And it looks like these like two, like small glowing basins, water basins. And it looks like there's like a room even. Are you guys seeing anything? Like anything crazy? Is there anything? They can talk there? to you, by the way. 
Can I send Zorbanov further in? They can't talk to me, or can they can't. can't. They can't okay. talk to you. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys see anything? Is there anybody down? I just right? have my eyes closed. I'm going. Claudia is just a scorpion. I can't see through her. It's just, it's just her by herself with him. Oh wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could. I don't think Why so. Why you send just, her? Just hanging out with the small guys, man. <laughs> I thought you could like see through her eyes or something. I see a couple water basins and some pathways. Be quiet. Be quiet. Always go left. I'm gonna send him further in. Okay. Um, how far of your how far of a range do you have for Zorba? I have no idea. It's been forever. I think it might be like 120 feet. Oh, so you awesome. might as well start getting closer to yourself. 100 feet. Okay, well. So you guys would have to, like, kind of try to keep up with it, too. I'm going to start humming a song and inspire everybody. Oh! Yeah, I'm going to go in the hole and start going down. Ted's about to give you guys your, uh, is this inspiring song? Yep. Which is, like, 17 temp HP or 19? I think 17. Get out your Ibanez. (laughs) (laughs) So you all will get 17 temp HP real quick. Mark that down. And as your little tiny familiars are getting closer into it, eventually uh, two of these seven feet tall, they look like half humanoid in stature, but they have like lizard scales, are going to run up and start fighting your little little guys. I'm going to retreat them. (laughs) Let's go ahead and roll initiative. And here we go. I rolled a 14, 18, and 16. Dang. I got a freaking 9. 12. 12. I got a 7. So it's going to go... It's going to go death. Adam. Adam and me are tied for one of his second ones, though. Um, You can go first with that. Okay, so we'll do death, Adam, me, Adam, Adam, Johnny, Iron Claw, Sean. So death... You will have to be within 100 feet of this as you see these. Oh, the light's not up anymore. Do, do tieflings have dark vision? Yes. I think so. Yes, yeah. we do. Okay, so you're able to um, pull back from PD vision, use your own vision, and you saw these two hulking uh, lizard folk things, troglodytes, approaching... You, the three little dudes. Okay, so how how big are these troglodytes? Can, can, like, like seven foot tall. So that's like five foot eight. I'm gonna go straight in for the headbutt. I was just gonna ask: Are the troglodytes what was inhabiting this person's body? Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't I didn't, seem I didn't like think me. so. So I feel like it's. It's a big enough creature that it would be stupid for death to headbutt them, so I will <laughs> headbutt them. Okay. Roll your headbutt. You're gonna die. Okay. So you're gonna strike. have to go into the uh, the area. Okay, so I walk in. I tiptoe in in my Jordans. Yep. I tiptoe in in my Jordans, and then I go straight in for headbutt. You know what? I'm going to give you sneak attack for this. <laughs> 25. To it, hit? It's, oh, wait. That was damage. But what do you get to hit, Justin? Okay, so... <laughs> this is like the first time my headbutt has ever done any damage. <laughs> and now you're making me roll to hit. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, why is it saying... Why is it... So I got... No, tw- you, no you rolled... Okay, so it said you rolled a 24 to hit. Okay, and then three bludgeoning damage. It says three bludgeoning, but now roll your sneak attack damage because you've got these oh, little, okay, these okay, little so dudes on it. So the, now you roll your additional like 3d6 or 4d6? Yeah, okay, so the 24 was to hit and then the yes. damage was at the bottom. Okay. I thought that was damage. Okay. Okay, so and then sneak attack. I think it's three or 4d6 at your level. Uh, sneak attack, 7d6. Jeez. So, okay. 
24. <laughs> you slam yeah. your head into this thing. I mean, you kill it. Which, a headbutt 27 damage is pretty brutal, no matter <laughs> how you look at it. So this so is we'll my just keep it most at that. successful headbutt I've ever done. By far. By far. It was be it was because I was distracted by the uh, the uh, the snake and the uh, a Komodo dragon. I just run up and I just slam my head directly into its stomach and just sever it in two. De- <laughs> Death is like a patch of sores. A what? Patch of sores. Pachiosaurus. Pachiosaurus. Patchy. Packy. Whatever. <laughs> whatever it is, I don't even know Boom. what that is. They got like a nine, not like a nine-inch thick skull pointing at like. Oh, is that the one with the flat skull with the spikes around it? Yeah, but now the other troglodyte is gonna run up to death. Where am I at in this? Am I like near anyone right you're now? Still, you're still flat side spinning, man. Yeah, you didn't even say. <laughs> you, <laughs> you didn't even say you came into the hole with us. So far, it's just the three of us. Oh, I jump in the hole came with for us. sure. But first, um, this troglodyte is going to make three attacks. Ooh. Wow. One with its bite and two with its claws. And it's going after... Don't do it. Death. Um, so that was an 18, a 21, and an 8 to hit. All, all for death? All for death. Because just, he just murdered his friend so hard. It's only two hit. It's not a lot of damage, unfortunately. These things, um, so one of it, it bites down on you, Death, but it only does three piercing damage, which is kind of <laughs> embarrassing. And then it claws at you for four points of piercing or uh, slashing damage. I'm sorry. So seven altogether. Seven so you take seven, seven total. But you have seventeen temp. Now, two more troglodytes come from behind some rubble. And uh, one of them is going to try to bite at Petey. I'm going to, so I'm going to use a reaction. I'm going to um, use Hellish Rebuke too. Oh, at the one that hit you. Yes. yes. So I make a, what kind of save? Do dex I make a 14. dex? Dex. I made a nine. All right. Nope. I'm realizing all of my rolls are saying two GMs. I don't think you guys are seeing my rolls, are you? So 10, 10 fire damage. You point your, point your little finger there. The one that you pointed at that bit you, Death, mm-hmm. erupts in those uh, bright white flames and just burns away and dies. <laughs> <laughs> These things are not very beefy, unfortunately, but one of them is trying to kill that um, PD boy. PD boy. Okay. We gotta stop that. Yeah, we, we can't <laughs> let him kill PD. What's Petey's uh, armor class? Two. He's not my snake, but he's <laughs> our snake. His highest roll was a 13. So Petey's... He, I mean, he definitely hit Petey. So how much health does Petey have? One HP? Plus a 17? Is Petey gone forever? <laughs> okay, Petey, I guess, would have the tip HP too, because I think <laughs> you can give it to a bunch of people. Oh my he go- god. He goes from being like a little ball python to a straight up anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So he bites he bites and claws at Petey for only a total of six points of damage, which isn't even the whole <laughs> tip HP. <laughs> but then the other one is going to run up and try to take care of Zerbanon. I was singing directly to the familiars, so they all have... I had him in retreat. He's fast. Okay, well, a 22 for Zarbanoff. For 4 HP of damage, and you've got 17 (laughs) temp HP. (sighs) You get temp HP. You get temp HP. But... (laughs) It's me. Oh, no, no. Now it's Devlin's turn. That's my turn. How close are the two truckload... Dikes to each other. Uh, very close. Because, like, all these are kind of grouped up now. There are the two truck. Two, uh. There's actually. There's uh, four. There's three, three. still. There's now, three right? remaining troglodytes. Yeah. Three, okay. So, whoever's closest to me, I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna pull out my bow and I'm gonna shoot lightning arrow at it. Okay, what's that to? So, I take a piece of ammunition 
which would be an arrow, and it turns into a bolt of lightning. And then I just make the attack roll like normal, which is 30. 32 and 9. I don't know how that broke down there. No, I make a DC save, it says. Yeah, deck save. A two. <laughs> like a two. Okay. So it hits for 32 and 9, I suppose. Um. 5d8. Um. Plus does 3D8. it hit multiple people? Yes. Okay. How so, many? Did you just kill Zarbanov? <laughs> no. I don't I think, think so. Choo- I think you can choose probably. Okay. Yeah. So it's whoever my target is takes 48 lightning damage on a hit, which is what that is. Whether I hit or miss, each creature within 10 feet of the target must make a deck saving throw, which you fail. Each creature. <laughs> each creature. So, oh, Justin. Each creature takes an additional... Whether you hit or miss, they do a deck saving throw. Each of these creatures takes 2d8 lightning damage on a failed save or 1d8 on a, sa- a successful save. It would be Justin, Petey, Claudia. Claudia's dead. She's got like one health, man. Unless no, she's got the it, 10 it HP. Only the secondary one, it's nine. That's the one for the extra damage for everybody else. So whoever does get hit only takes nine damage. So I'm, t- I'm rolling dex. Dex. Roll 15 dex save. Uh, you dex. guys can't see it, but it says 18. I, I believe it. it. You've got a really high... The because yeah, it rolled it a giant D twenty on my screen instead yeah, of in the yeah. That's I know weird. what you mean. Anyways, yeah, I believe it. So you're safe. Did Claudia die? No, no. It's it, it's it's eighteen plus fifteen. I, I rolled a twenty three. Cool. Oh, okay. No, eighteen plus fifteen is higher. No, 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 eighteen 23. plus five. Eighteen plus five. Twenty three. Okay. Deck save. Deck save. It's an eight. So Claudia got hit. With with what? With nine damage. <laughs> Of lightning. She's got one hit point. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't she have, have 17? Her, yeah, man. she has 17 temp HP points, man. Okay, so she's got 18 total. Okay. Oh, that temp HP. Johnny may have saved a Coming lot of people yeah, tonight. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he came in clutch there. Ted, way to go. All right, so she saved. But the first troglodyte took 32 lightning damage. Oh, he's shit. dead. And he just <laughs> exploded, dude. All in flames. It just burnt to a crisp right there. And the other two, or yeah, the other two took nine lightning damage each. Well, is that all you're going to do? <laughs> no, I have a bonus action. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to kill any of the familiars or anything, man. I'm just going to cast a regular... Like, I'm just going to shoot a regular shot. At the... I'm shooting my 29 shot. 29 to hit. Guess what? That's going to hit. 29 to hit. You're going to kill damage. one of the troglodytes. There's one troglodyte left. Describe how you killed that one. All right. So the second shot, after that lightning bolt goes back, I just whip out another arrow, point it right at him, and it's a straight shot. pierces him right between the eyes and just drops him right there on the floor. Okay. Now it's my turn, back to back. And you guys know how excited I am for this. Aren't they all dead? Yeah. Which the troglodytes are all dead, yeah. But guess what? <laughs> I had I had three th- I had three things in my initiative order, though. <laughs> so what's the next one? Um, I'm very excited for this, so just please bear with me for one second. So first, you all see a little brain with four legs uh, start running at you all. Oh, I, what? I, oh, this chest brain. <laughs> There's actually four of them. Four of them? There's four four brains with legs, like dog <laughs> legs. Whoa. Um, we'll say two are going towards. Who's up on death? Just death in the familiars. Uh, me death and death. In the familiars. I'm back. Okay. Two are going up for Ted and death, and two are going up for um, after Devlin did so well at killing their companions. Devlin! Yes, I'm close. I'm right at the yeah, lip of the tunnel. Yeah, go ahead and just make real quick an uh, intelligence saving throw. An 18. You can make two. One for each. One for each? Yeah. The second one I got a nine on. No, so you're gonna take um, 11 points of psychic damage, which isn't too bad. I know you got a lot of health. 
Uh, but also, your intellect is going to go down by 13. How the f*** do I even adjust that? <laughs> what is your intellect, by the way? Uh, uh, 11. Oh, so you're at zero. You Oh, no, that's kind of... Oh, so you're just, like, stunt. You, if you're... His brain's mashed potatoes. Now that you have zero intellect, you're literally just... Like, stunt. You're just... It's mashed taters. Well, how close am I? I, I jumped down this hole. I'm no at the problem, edge right? of the tunnel with you. I didn't go yes. into the cavern. But... Two other ones... So two of them tried for a berry, and uh, one failed, one hit them. Um, the other two, one's gonna go for death, one's gonna go for Ted, since they're in the melee range. So you guys both make in intelligence saving throws. It's a low check, so Barry rolled really bad, and then they've rolled a natural... Okay, my intelligence is plus zero. Fifteen. You're good. I rolled a two. So now, Johnny, I'm gonna roll... <laughs> how much is your intelligence? Uh, zero. No, 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 like, what's your, like, big score? Uh, eleven. See, this one only rolled six this time. <laughs> So now you're just down to five, um, five intelligence. So you're cut, you're feeling kind of dumb. Cool. He can't do calculus, but he could do algebra. <laughs> I I can I can math with the worst of them. Hey, Iron Claw, can you please greater restore me? When well, you, first I sure yeah, can. Get there. Oh my well, first it's it's my turn again, real quick. Um, Don't come after me. I'm already sad. From that back room. Three, the door slides open, and you just happen to see like three mind players walk out. Okay. Whoa. Okay. okay. Dude, they just they just wipe me out with a little doggy brain. Sweet. And you're gonna bring out three mind flayers. So, it, it was cool <laughs> playing with you guys. <laughs> I thoroughly yeah, enjoyed I it. Can I get that teleport? <laughs> 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 Hey, can you open up your uh, mansion again? Nope. Is time yet? <laughs> I already Let's used get it. Out of here. <laughs> Let's have a plan. I got a Do plan. Do we take out the mind flayers first or the devourers? What's the plan? Let's not go up on the mind flayers and just, you know, like, fireball them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, it catches. Is it my turn? It's the mind flayers' turn, and I'm trying to not, not kill us. <laughs> One of them is going to cast Dominate Monster on Devlin. Devlin, you make a wisdom saving throw. 14. Um, I don't think that's gonna do it. No, we were we were looking for We were looking for a 15. Devlin's dead. Devlin no, Devlin's not dead. He's gonna die. Devlin is now. Javelin, you're actually feeling a little bit better than you were a couple seconds ago, but now you feel the hunger to attack your four friends. Yeah. You have to kill him. I'm going to fireball Devlin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fireball. if Devlin dies, I mean, he's just like a... <laughs> wow. Jesus, whatever. Did you hear that, Barry? I heard it. I heard you're it. just a whatever. You're a throwaway bot. Barry can come back like, in any other I'm a different throwaway. character. If anybody <laughs> dies, it should be Barry, hopefully. If we wow. kill Devlin, Barry can go to sleep. So. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm out after this. Another one is going to cast uh, you, uh, Dustin, and Barry, and Johnny, and Sean. You might be familiar with this one. It's going to cast Mind Blast. But since I've been affected so far, can I have a reaction? Um, you will get a reaction at this if you save your intelligence saving throw. Cool. A five. <laughs> and a six for death. You guys are going to take 22 psychic damage and be stunned for one minute unless somebody can awaken you. Oh my god. The other one is going to run up to death and try to make an, uh, a tentacle attack and suction onto death's face. 
<laughs> Dude, we're gonna die. And steal his brain. Uh, it Dude. was a 15. Sean, did you get rid of your finger of death spell? No, I have it. Death, what's your armor but class? 16. Can't use it. I rolled a 15 and a 9 because I, I rolled for advantage. Mm -hmm. You're still like kind of bobbing and weaving and this thing can't grab it, grapple you with its tentacles. Is it my turn? So, Ted, you can either... Your two options are make another intelligence saving throw, try to get out of the stun, or you can drop back in the initiative order and hope that somebody gets you out of the stun. I will drop back in the order. All right. Um, <laughs> next up is Iron Claw. Then Iron Claw. I hope you've got something really good. I what? Something to wake them? Like how am I supposed to wake you up? Hit you with a tree? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I just don't get it. There's no way for me to wake them up. Slap me. The only thing I have is you said I got what was that spell? I look at my change forms now. Hang on, restoration. Greater restoration. Let's read this. You imbue a creature you touch with positive energy to undo a debilitate, debilitating effect. You can reduce the target's exhaustion level by one and end one of the following effects. Uh, charmed, pure petrified, curse, all that. Pretty much everything, probably. So I can do that for one person. It's an action. Delvin, man. And I can touch them. Delvin. Do, do Delvin. Yes. Delvin's mind controlled. I'm going to go touch Delvin. I'm going to touch Delvin. He's mind controlled. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we can save. Delvin's straight up mind controlled. So how close is he, though? Delvin's right next to you. Yeah, I'm literally standing right next to you. Okay, I'm just going to just swing my arm and just poof, touch him. So does my intelligence go back to normal, too? Yeah. Greater restoration. Uh, greater, normal. greater restoration will just like straight up cure you. You are good to go. <laughs> Bonus action. Yeah, we're back, boys. All right. Bonus Thank action. You, Iron Claw. Turning into an earth elemental. Hopefully that. What kind happens. of animal is it? It's a bear earth elemental. Hey, hey, hey! I'm an earth elemental bear. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. Uh. Next will be Lord Sean Snow because we'll say that. Ted dropped under Sean Snow in case. Wait, Sean Snow, I turn into a bear, but I get to attack. Oh, do you? Okay, who are you going to go and attack? Whatever's closest to me. I like doing the closest. You want to do stuff, one of the man. mind flares? Yes, the closest one to me. Okay. Oh, this is pretty cool. The Earth Elemental uh, does double damage to objects and structures. Well, they're not objects or structures. Well, I know that, but it's cool. I do, so I could do multi-attack. I do two slam attacks. Two slam attacks. Wow. Wow. So I rolled a three and an eight. They're both plus... Oh. It says weapon attack plus eight to hit. Plus eight. Your last one will hit a mind flare. The first one won't first hit. first one will not. I'll just take the average. It does 14 damage. Six, you rear back and claw down on this mind flare and do 16 slashing, I'm assuming? Uh, bludgeoning. Bludgeoning, okay, because you're an earth elemental, so it's more like breaking at them, okay. Smashing it, yeah, you man. You smash smashing. into it for 16 points of damage, uh, this one that's in front. 16 damage. <laughs> it doesn't seem like much at all. <laughs> but now, it's Lord Chon Snow's turn, who Lord Chon Snow... Is not in cast, incapacitated. I'm gonna heckin' cast disintegrate on the one of the mind flares oh, that doesn't get me attack. Heckin' yeah. Do I make a save for that or do you roll for that? Uh, let's see. I want to steal one of the brains. Dexterity saving throw. So I rolled a three. Oh, so you fail. I would hope so. Ooh. Ooh, 75 points of damage? What? That can't be right, right? That's right. What does that look like when you disintegrate right. this mind flare? Let me tell you. A thin, a thin green ray springs from your pointing finger to a target you can see within range. The creature uh, can 
It can be a creature, an object, a creation, a magical force, such as a wall created by a wall of force. Uh, let's see. If you fail it, blah, blah, blah. Disintegrated teacher, <laughs> creature, teacher, and <laughs> everything it is wearing <laughs> and carrying except magic items are reduced to a pile of fine gray dust. Disintegrate! So did you just, you just killed one of the three? That's right. Yeah, it's Ted's turn, and nobody's saved you, Ted, so now, Ted, you'll just have to make an int saving throw to try to break bus free. Twelve? Um, wait. No, you got it. I got it? It was a twelve. Nice. That's that's your whole turn, though, John. But I rolled a thirteen last time. Wait, what? Wait, what were you, were you stunned by, oh, you were stunned by the mind flare. Yeah. Yeah. Not oh, that. nope. That's a fifteen you need to make. Oh, why'd you tell me that, Johnny? I thought it was the little brain thing. Death, it's your turn. All right, so are you still stunned? Yeah, I need to do an intelligence, right? Yep. Oh, wait, you wrote an eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> he's out. But that's your that's your turn, I'm though, free. which which is very boring. I'm sorry. That's he's gonna fine. mind control you again or something. That will mean that it is Devlin's turn. Okay, it is my turn. So, Devlin, there are two mind flayers and two brains? Two brains. No, four brains. We didn't four kill brains? brains? Nobody's killed a brain yet. Four brains. Yeah, get them brains out. All right, well, are the brains next to each other? Uh, there are two up on the melee group and two on the range group. You know what I mean? The, the melee group is um, Death, Iron Claw, and Ted, and the range okay. group is Lord Sean Snow and Devlin. Okay, I'm going for the ones that are up on Death and Ted, since we're back oh, already. Not even worrying about yourself. No, th- th- they need to be saved, man. They're right yeah. up on them. All right, I'm gonna cast. Uh, I'm gonna cast. Oh no, wait. Hang on. If I cast Hail of Thorns, does that mean it would hit Death and Ted too? Yeah, but that's a small price to pay. Right. Okay. So that's 28 piercing. Oh wait. No, oh, hang on. DC 15 save. So you got to roll for the doggies. Okay. Well, the doggies don't have a ton of... Um... Yeah, so two deck saves for the doggies. And Johnny and, and Justin. Death and Ted, you got to roll That's a, a deck 10 save. and a 12. So you failed. Both of both. them. Both. Yes. Those are probably both super dead because they don't have a lot of health. 22 for death. You're safe. Johnny, roll a deck save. And make it a 15 or higher, please. Because <laughs> you, otherwise you're going to take 28 piercing There was damage. an error with your formula. <laughs> <laughs> 19! Oh, thank God, a 19. Yes, you're safe too. Woo. Both of them failed, and they've got 21 HP. So, Barry, you can go ahead and describe what okay, this looks so like, this attack. The first one, it's just a normal attack. So it pierces the one brain. And then afterwards, it, it's a, it creates a rain of thorns, it says, that sprouts from the ranged weapon. So it follows that one arrow, and these thorns just shoot out. And it literally spreads all around Death and Ted, perfectly outlining them, but pierces, I mean, the absolute crap out of the two brains that are right there on the ground to just shreds. That was beautiful. Wipes them out. <laughs> and that's only my first attack. <laughs> I have two attacks. So there are two more brains up on you and Lord Sean Snow, and then there are two mind flayers left. Get them brains. Son. Yeah, get the brains. Get them brains. The brains, brains are bad. So look, I casted that as my fourth level slot. Okay. But I have Hail of Thorns in a third level slot. Can I cast it again on those brains? No, you can't cast another spell, but you can do another attack. Okay, so just another regular attack. Alright, I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot at <sighs> Should I go for the other brains? Yes. Or should I go for one of the mind flayers? Go for the, the other brains. brains. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll go for the one that's on Lord Sean Snow. A thirteen to hit. Yes, you got it. All right. With six piercing damage. How much piercing damage? S- six piercing damage. Six? Uh, six. It is still alive, but it's got big arrows sticking through the uh, frontal cortex of it, and it looks pretty bad. <laughs> is it stuck to the ground? Can it like? Is it incapacitated? Yeah, with his high roll, we'll say that. We'll say it's stuck to the ground now. But it might make a roll and uh, pick up 
pick itself up. Ah oh, man, that was a good rebound. Yeah. From Whatever you did, that worked, it. and I thank you for it. Yeah. Dude, is that hail of thorns? That that brain is going to try to pick itself up with a negative two strength saving throw. Cool. <laughs> it got a twelve, which I've realized there's not an established roll, but we'll say that's more than a 12 to pick itself up from the being pinned. The other one is going to hit for Devlin. Devlin, you make an intelligence saving throw again. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. It did the big dice again. But I got a 16. Alright, you're good. You're good. Uh, it, It smacks up into your head. You just, it doesn't do anything. But now it's Mind Flayer turn. And you all hear at the same time in your mind, like telepathically, this is a mercy compared to what is coming. Both mind flares are going to go up to those like glowing purple basins. And you see them mixing some different arcane runes around. And then they dip back into the room and the door closes. So they're gone. The door closed, and you all start to hear a little rumble. And now it is Ted moved back, so it's Iron Claw's turn. Okay, I'm doing great restoration, but that's gonna take me out of my elemental. I was only in my elemental state oh. for a freaking one turn. Who's who well, are you using it on? Well, wait. John. First, Dustin, when the when the elephant closest to you left your range, you'd get to make it a opportunity attack on it. Well, yeah, so I do opportunity attack to people, like, leaving my turn, and also if they attack someone else within my range, if they're five feet from me and they attack someone else. But they didn't. So I can do opportunity attack is what you're saying? You get one attack, not multi-attack. Okay, okay well, opportunity attack makes enemies not move for their whole turn. No. So they got movement at zero. Nice. Nice. Stunned them. Um, and so I'll do my attack. I am rolling. So it's plus eight to hit. Yes. Okay. 14 damage, and he cannot move for his turn. So the other one goes into the back room and closes the door. Now, Lord Sean Snow, what would you like to do to this one that is, like, pinned down from Iron Claw's attack? I'm going to put him in my portable hole. How do you put him in the portable hole? I don't remember. I think you just lay it on the ground and it forms a hole. Right? And it says it's six feet wide in diameter. Unless he's bigger than that. So we could have him make a deck save to try to jump out of that way. Isn't he pinned down? So it would be disadvantage. I guess he is. So we will do disadvantage. Sucker. (laughs) <laughs> which was uh well his first roll was a six total and it didn't do the second roll but let's see what the second roll is six and a nine you gobble him up in that portable hole he can try to do a DC on his turn I'm yeah, sure right to get out but yeah so he's in there I'm gonna seal it up but it's Ted's turn Okay, yeah, Ted's back up. So, Ted, so the Mind Flayer, the only Mind Flayer that's alive and not in a hole, is currently in, like, behind some double doors that, like, sealed shut. Okay, well, what's the a, what's a plus for, uh, to, te- to kick down a door? <laughs> uh, that would be an athletics check. We'll do that kind of separately. Um, athletics? I have plus six. So with a 15, you'll be able to kick through this d- uh, double door, sliding door, get into it, and you see a mind flare working some levers. And this is the first time you guys were like in this room, so you guys haven't seen this room before. You see like tables with beakers and smoking oils, and looks like a lot of different experiments going on. And then what that last mind flare working some levers, try to take off. Let me guess, John, you're going to hit him with your guitar. Yeah, I'll hit him with my guitar. Plus four. No, your guitar is like a plus nine, it should say. Well, I'm hit 2d6 plus four. 
Oh, yeah, the damage. Yeah. Yes. To hit is like a plus nine. Yeah, plus nine. A 29. Natural 20. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, okay. Um, so that's going to be 5d6 of damage instead of 4d6 of damage. 26. 26 is a very good start of damage that you run up behind this mind flare and hit him right in the back of his head. And he turns and faces you like, what the f***? I mean, what the heck? I, that's that's pretty good for my guitar. I don't think I've ever rolled that high. That is very for good. For my guitar. We're back up to death. Death. I think there's one brain. No, two brains left. Two brains. One's pinned to the ground. One's up on Devlin. And then the mind flare, as you see that uh, Ted just busted down the door. Go for the mind flare. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll kill for the. I'll go for the brains. This entire ground around that room is shaking, rumbling. It's even starting to like lift off the ground very slowly, like just like one foot off the ground. This thing is like about to take off and like a shit. All right, I'm gonna cast a uh, third level burning hands. On the mind flare or on the brain? On the mind flare, yeah. So, yeah, you run into the room that uh, Ted has kicked in the door. That means I make a deck saving throw. I only got a plus one dex. I rolled an 11. Nope. Does that do anything for you, Justin? Nope. All right, here we go. Of 18. It's trying to fly the ship away, and then Ted hit it in the back of the head with a guitar. And now you're like burning its robes away. And now it's like really short shorts of uh, robes. <laughs> really short shorts. <laughs> it's looking bad and it doesn't seem like it's having a very good time. <laughs> Next up is Devlin. I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns again on the two brains. Okay. That are out there. W- the, the brain that's pinned down is going to have disadvantage. Yeah, I just want to wipe them out at one go here. So, roll. Ooh, that's only eight piercing. So I make a each. dex saving throw? Oh, yeah. These things aren't very dexterous. I had to cast at third level because I'm out of fourth level slots. Um, so that was a 12 for the first one, and then the one that uh, with disadvantage rolled a nat 20, and then an eight. All right, you failed both of them. So they both take eight piercing damage. Uh, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Both of them. Both are dead, dead, dead. Awesome. Okay, so that takes care of the brains. I think Ted wanted to keep one of the brains. I did. It's too late now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I, I just shot my normal attack at the one who wasn't already pinned on the ground and pinned him, Dead Ringer, next to the other one on the ground. And again, bow pointed up, shoots out a barrage of thorns, and it just rips both of them to shreds as they're already pierced on those arrows rips them up and they're gone. Well, dang. And then, for my second attack, wait, how far away is that room? Uh, the room is now? like 60 feet from you, so I mean, with a bow, and the doors now have been kicked in by Ted, so you can actually see the mind flare. Alright, so I'm gonna move up as far as I can to get close, and my second attack. It just has to be a regular bow attack. 26 hits, I'm sure. Sure does. <laughs> and it's just eight piercing damage straight into. Ooh. So this into this mind flare, as he's trying to like take off in the ship, uh, you uh, have this arrow sprout right from his upper shoulder and come out the back end. Mind flares. To, what would the mind flare do? He can't do mind blast again. He would cry and go home. He would cry and go home probably. Okay, this is what he's gonna do. He's going to look at Ted. Ted, you have got to make a constitution saving throw real quick. Perfect. Four. Perfect. You you just fly up to the ceiling of this room. And as you do, the mind flare takes off running out of the room. And he starts to head down towards that tunnel. Mm-hmm. So he's coming towards me and Iron Claw now. Yeah, a little bit towards you guys, so uh, just to make the map as simple as we can get it for a theater of the mind, uh, you all came in from the south, from the exposed 
entryway from the uh, mining shaft. And then in the northwest corner of the room, so catty corner from the entrance that you all came in, is where this platform, the two glowing basins, and the room are. In the north section is where there's like an exposed tunnel that seems to go down. Uh, Devlin, you would probably guess that it goes down to the Underdark, just its orientation where it's laying. So he would have to go past you to, you two a little bit to get down there. Can I... Th- I'm going to Thorn Whip. Th- thorn Whip is my staff, and it is one action, right? So I'm going to do that. One action. I'm doing Thorn Whip. He's Thorn Whip to me. Maybe. Do I make a save, or do you roll attack roll? No, he's Thorn Whip to me. It lashes out at command towards creature, make a melee at- yeah, Spell you make attack. a roll. Dang it. That's a 14. Oh, no, 14 you rolled plus, 14. That's going to be 14 plus. 14 plus, what, 10 or something? Yeah, it's, pl- it's plus more than a 1. I can tell you're, you that right you're now. You're thorn whip to me. You take a D6 in damage, first of all. Wait, spells damage is increased by... What am I doing? 11th? How lo- what level are we? 11? We're 14. I don't know, like, this says when you reach 5th level, 11th level, so I'm guessing it's going to do 3d6 then. Okay, you roll your damage, you definitely pull it back towards you. 10 total, not not terrible, but not good. So, Lorchon Snow, you're up, and this thing is right up on Iron Claw, and it looks pretty beat up. I'm going to cast a level 4. Magic missile. Oh, oh my, okay. So you instantly hit. Roll um seven d four. I think it is. Seventy four plus five. Yeah. This thing had like damage. ten HP. Okay. You can describe how you kill it. All right. I shoot the magic missile. And it goes in and out of its wounds, making this noise. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, blue blood? Go on everywhere. Yeah, this one definitely has blue blood, but... Yeah, so this platform is still, like, rumbling and shaking. It's, like, lifting off of the ground at the moment, slowly. I'm gonna kick one of them basins. All right, roll me an athletic set. Ten plus six. (laughs) Sixteen. (laughs) (laughs) You kick over one of the basins and shatter it. And instantly, the entire platform just drops and slams to the ground. And that low humming noise just ceases to exist. Heckin' yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We we freaking scratch and claw our way out of this cave. Boy, there's another Go. basin, man. There's two basins. But... Even kicking over just one basin stopped the liftoff from the platform. Oh. Everybody, real quick, go ahead and roll me a quick arcana check or intelligence check or history check. Uh, just so if we can see if we can get a little bit more information before you all head back to the town master. Ooh, yes, I don't think I have whisper. the greatest arcana. Probably not. Maybe this is probably me leaning Plus on Lord Chon Snow a little bit. I, I got a plus one. What was the highest? Uh, 16. A 16. Oh, man. Lord Sean Snow, now that you've gotten a better look at this area, you can tell that these runes are Netheries. Netheril was once a great and very magical nation whose flying cities crashed to the ground thousands of years ago, and some of it seems to have survived beneath Icewind Dale. Uh, it seems that the mind flayers were probably maybe trying to use that strange new gem found in the mine to uh, power this mostly intact uh, section of the remains. You guys can head back to the town master now and like give them this info and free Agnes. Yes. So we get there, go up to the town master, tell him, look, we were attacked in the mine by some intellect devourers, which is what's been making everybody go crazy. Rain boys. 
You see. Brain boys. And also, we ran into three mind flayers down there that were controlling everything. But we handled the situation. Everything's good. Agnes was not wrong. That was not her husband. He was already gone. That thing ate his brain. She needs to be freed. She did the right thing by killing him. Yeah, so you relay all this information to Shaylin Matthew. And um, Shaylin readily accepts all this information for the sake of time and frees Agnes Humbucker on grounds of it's not a crime to kill a, a, a body snatching brain thin boy. <laughs> um, or mind flayers. Or mind flayers. So the question is, you all are open to take the teleportation circle back to Raven's Point. Does Devlin stay in Tourmaline? Hmm. Devlin? What do you do? What happens? Devlin, you can come stay at my mansion or Longboy <laughs> Tower anytime you like. You could have like three uh three rooms in that tower, man. Hey Devlin, I have bunk beds. I have bunk beds in both Longboy Tower and the mansion. You're welcome to stay with me. I got bunk beds and Netflix. There's Look, I- a ton <laughs> of hot dogs still. I gotta say, I uh, I really appreciate all the help here with the <laughs> with the investigation, and uh, I mean it does kind of feel like I've you know, lived out my stay here. So uh, I think I'll return back to the guilds with you guys. I'll come with you. We got rid of our mammoth turkey, so we got room for you, man. (laughs) (laughs) What do we do with them? Put them in your mansion. in your mansion. (laughs) So you all port back through the teleportation circle, land back in the Adventurers Guild uh, teleportation circle, and Benny comes back. Oh, hey, guys. Hey, how was it? Y'all got it? I'm sure. Oh, hey, Devlin. I, I think we how got it. I think we got it. Good to you see you, You know, Benny, Benny you, should, uh, you should get more information on these quests <laughs> <laughs> before you just throw us in there. I figured you were going to meet with Devlin. He would Fill you in with gas. Yeah, that was all. That was all good and well, but uh, the more inf- the more you know, the better. Right. Death is just all so right. exhausted from the day he doesn't want to hear any of Benny's <laughs> stuff, and he just slaps the Sudoku out of Benny's hand, and just we, we just all walk out at the same time. Yeah, we all give him the the f you stare as Death slaps Sudoku out of his hand. Oh, one of these days. One of these days. He's going to be the big bad at the end of the campaign. It's me, your Dungeon Master, Adam DeWeese, yet again. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast, and everybody that threw this event together and made it an absolute blast to be a part of. And a very special thank you to all of our current patrons. So thank you so much, Rachel, a.k.a. Dragon Bait, Tiana H., Talking Anime with Mitch, Lawful Stupid Podcast, Jeremy Fair, Zoltar, Loki Strike, Jason Mervat, Bradley M., Danny T., Sash, Brittany D., Bay Area Beer Socials, Remus S., Jory and Drake, Drew Rundu, Joel Lorber, and Danny M. You all are keeping this show going. If you want to get your name on this list and a whole bunch of other really cool bonus content, you can go to patreon.com slash one shot onslaught. And folks, we run on very low margins on this show. So if you're thinking your $1 a month would not go a long way for this show, I can promise you that it will. Not only that, it means that you enjoy what we're doing, which just makes us feel so good all month 
And it makes me personally feel good when I get to read this list at the end of every episode for this show and for Halfway to Heroes and get to see the list growing. I really thoroughly enjoy that. If you need some other ways to support the show or to find the show, you can follow us on all social media at One Shot Onslaught. You can go to our website, OneShotOnslaught.com, or you can go to our podcast network website. You'll be able to find One Shot Onslaught there on that website, and that website is called MajesticGoose.com. There you can find all of our shows we do on the Majestic Goose Network. Shows like One Shot Onslaught, Halfway to Heroes, Dice Talk, and Roll for Weird. Also, if you want to... Come and hang out with us and join our amazing and super welcoming community. You can go to our Discord page where we are all super active in there every single day. Uh, you can go to bit.ly slash one shot discord or bit.ly slash halfway to discord. Both of those will take you right to our Discord welcome page. Stop by. Let us know that you found us from this podcast event. That would be very cool. Um, we also have a Twitch channel where we stream a lot. We're currently adding even more weekly scheduled shows. Right now, we have got Solo Rolling, which every Thursday at 7.30 Eastern, I play Dungeons & Dragons all by myself with no DM, play different solo adventures from dmsguild.com. Stop by, help me not die every week, as I usually lean on chat to survive those. We also stream one-shots with our patrons once a month at least, usually more often than that. We also stream Roll for Weird once or twice a month on Fridays, and we stream Shitty Cowboys um, every other Saturday, all on twitch.tv slash one shot onslaught. We also give away a lot of stuff on that Twitch channel. We give away stickers for the first Nat 20 of every single stream we do, so come by and check it out. Again, if you enjoyed even just this one episode, if you had a lot of fun in this two-ish hours of content, We would so, so appreciate you to stop by our iTunes page on uh, Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star rating and review. Let us know what you liked. Let us know your favorite part of the episode. And then if you listen to our other shows, uh, like Halfway to Heroes, we would love for you to do the same for them. Uh, Speaking of Halfway to Heroes, that is my one and only homebrew campaign I have ever ran. So it's kind of my baby. So I would love for you to go and give that one a listen as well. Before I go, if you want some suggestions on some other uh, one-shot onslaught episodes to jump right into right now, I've got a few suggestions. Um, you could always jump into our one-on-one character introduction episodes. Those episodes have the character name at the first part of the title, like Lord Sean Snow, Run Turtles Run, um, and Iron Claw, Hey, 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 I'm a Bear. Those will give you uh, the best background information about the characters in the show, so it's a pretty good starting point. Um, our first couple of one-shots are lower quality they get better as time goes on so we usually don't suggest starting at the beginning one shots until you're all caught up so the character intros and then a couple of the really good ones are happy jack's fun house the madhouse of tasha's kiss bastion of the frost lord i am your world the turkey snatcher uh we also have a full playthrough of the dragon of ice Fire peak campaign uh, we play through that whole mini campaign from the Essentials Kit in about six episodes. And then we've got two all-guest one-shots that were also very fun. The Magic Village for Sale and A Vital Vintage. In uh, Magic Village for Sale, you might hear a familiar voice from this podcast event, uh, Celeste from Venture Maiden. So uh, check out all of those episodes, all of our other ones too. I'm just trying to throw out some that uh, I think are my uh, top five favorites. Also, while editing, I did realize that we completely forgot about the mind flare that Lord Sean Snow put into his portable hole. Um, so maybe that'll be a big surprise in the uh, coming episode sometime next time he unravels it. We'll see. That was just completely accidental and just forgetfulness on all of our collective parts. So just in case you were wondering, that was just our bad. And now with all this talking out of the way, I will let you all get right to these outtakes. Again, thank every single one of you so much just for listening, making it this far with us. And thank you, Wizards of the Coast. And thank you, uh, Jason, from Adventure They Wrote for helping uh, put this together. And we had a blast doing it. So uh, we will talk to you all later. Bye, everybody. We got to go over to, well, not me. I'm not going. I fuck. Oh, I really hate the cold. I must drop the first (laughs) Don't take it already. (laughs) <laughs> I was hoping I was hoping we'd have to like find the body and we could use some blood seeking penguins again. Ooh. <laughs>
Oh, we haven't used a blood sinking penguin since Christmas. I oh, know. <laughs> since Christmas. Dude, this this fly is drunker than I am. <laughs> is that fly still in your chest air? <laughs> no, no. He was drinking my beer from one of the beer cans. And uh he's all over the place now. <laughs> Let's get this shit wrapped up. So, uh, Barry, take it away. Wrap it up. <laughs> okay. That's it. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Go back to the town master. Sign off. Save right, it. Yeah, send so. it. Go home. A Majestic Goose Podcast. Honk. Honk.